Hi, I'm Jan de Leeuw. I'm uh, working at the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI, in Nairobi. And uh, I've been here uh, in Addis Ababa for the last three days to attend a meeting on the future of pastoralism. Uh, and uh, it was a very interesting meeting and I'd like to say uh, a few things about uh, what I think about it, my findings uh, and what was interesting in there. So we've been looking at, at pastoralism and there's a lot of interest in, in pastoralism and the cultures uh, which are there, which are really unique and uh, people outside pastoral lands recognize these cultures that are unique. So we've been looking at this, this, these cultures and the livestock uh, related production systems in pastoralism for a long time. You see that these systems at this moment are very much in, uh, in transition and actually we had a number of participants from pastoral systems all over Africa. I think something like 20 or 10 or 20 different areas which were constructing a timeline what was happening in these systems. And what we noted is that the history of what has been happening before the 1950s, 1960s, it was largely dominated by, by droughts, by disease outbreaks and a number of peace political issues which were happening in colonial times. But the impact of outside uh, society on these special systems was largely minimal, apart from the political issues like displacing people in Kenya, the Maasai from the White Highlands into the Maasai territory. The pastoralists were still able to, to utilize their ter ter territories. There was not much, much interference from outside. I mean, what you see since uh, decolonization, there's a number of things happening uh, very quickly, like uh, people getting exposed to different religions, which is affecting their culture, getting into education, which is uh, affecting their, uh, their family culture, I should say, not the large culture, but really the culture at the family level. A number of political decisions which has to do with uh, land tenure, a lot of the land uh, which used to be in, in common property uh, is being privatized, so that's affecting pastoral societies a lot. And what you see now is that with population growth, but also with these other drivers of change, you see that pastoral societies are really uh, at a, at a posi in a position now that they're really transitioning. Um, there's problems there. That Pastoralism is largely a livestock-based livelihood. And you see in many areas there's not enough livestock to sustain everybody, so people are deciding to move out of pastoralism. Still, people also decide to stay into pastoralism, but the kind of pastoralism is not the same as they used to have 20 years ago or 30 years ago. This pastoralism of full, mobi full mobility is being compromised by a number of things. And one of it is that there was in a very interesting session yesterday about land grabbing. And what you find out is that pastoral lands, they are huge tracts of lands. And they are not homogeneous. They are lands which are mosaics. The kind of mosaics where you have wetter spaces and we have drier spaces. And pastoral people use this in a very efficient way. They go to these drier spaces in the, in the, in the wet season and then the wetter spaces which are more productive and which remain green for longer, they use them in their dry season. So this is an intricate system which they, they use and they use it in a very efficient way. And what you see now is that there's land grabbing. For example, in the Tana River Delta in, in Kenya, where the Oromo, Oromo are, uh, you see that outside speculators and people who want to develop lands are buying up the land, getting leases from government, and basically pastoral people are being displaced. And this is a very worrying situation, because basically the better parts of the pastoral uh, lands which are taken out, which are really uh, uh, constraining and limiting the possibilities for pastoral, pastoral people to uh, sustain their livelihoods. Uh, that's one of the issues I've been uh, taking up and uh, I think it's uh, happening all over. It's not only the Tana River Delta. You hear similar stories from Sudan, uh, from Uganda, and uh, so it's, it's a trend which you see uh, all over. It has to do with land tenure. Much of the land which pastoral people are using is common property land which is not owned by these communities. There's a traditional ownership, but the formal recognition uh, that they own this land is not there. And what nearly needs to be done in this case is to move towards a system where this recognition of land ownership and land tenure is, is, is formalized and communities really become the owners of this land. Uh, the other thing I, I realized uh, over here is when we talk about the future of pastoralism, uh, we tend to think uh, about, about very much community-based uh, approaches to seek opportunities. And well, one thing you can, can think about is that innovation and changes have to come from inside, so it's very much a bottom-up approach. 
Yet if you look at drylands, <coughs> there's also decisions which are made by governments and even uh, intergovernmental inter bodies about investments in drylands. And these are not the kind of small scale interventions, they are really about big scale interventions. I was thinking about drylands and looking into that and if you think about it and you see that they are lands which are really in many cases isolated and the whole issue of, of infrastructure and road infrastructure and investment in there is an issue which I think we need to take more seriously. I'm not a proponent uh, to, to develop road infrastructure, uh, not at all, <coughs> uh, but I think uh, decisions are being made. And I think a community like we have over here should think about it. How do we respond to, the, to that? Is it economic? Are the economic effects of road infrastructure development, are they positive? Are they negative, having negative effects on, on social systems and on cultural systems? I think you might argue that, that roads, better connection with the outside, is not very positive for, for conserving cultures. Uh, the same thing happened, uh, uh, there's issues around the environmental impacts of that. And I think when we talk about pastoral lands, there's something like that. We have to think about that because there's investors like the World Bank, the European Union, they think in terms of 50 or 100 million dollars and not into small scale investment to be really large scale investment. So I think that's another issue we have to address and it's going to have uh, an impact also on the livelihoods, on the livestock uh, side. Uh, it creates opportunities for better marketing. So from the perspective of my organization, I think that's also an issue where we should have an interest in looking into.